All right, now we're going to search for a company. Now, instead of looking for the company manually under the search profiles and companies section, we're actually going to use the search bar at the top and just type in the company name to search for it and click on it. So let's search for Amazon. And that automatically brings up the public company profile. So you can see under company summary, there are different sheets or views that you can look at. This is a great profile page that starts with key information like number of employees, ticker symbol, year founded, etc. You can see here business description, classification, key investors, and so on. Then down here you get some good financial information such as the market capitalization. You can see 1.6 trillion here for Amazon. You can see its share price along with volume in that chart. Quickly, you can find the revenue, EBITDA, and so on for the business, index membership, and key professionals, board members, subsidiaries. There's a lot of great information that's packed into this tier sheet. So this is a great place to start getting information on a business. Now, from here, you may want to branch out. You may want to look at the corporate timeline, for example. And you can scroll all the way back to the very, very beginning. So that may be helpful to navigate. You can get a detailed business description here. Let's look at their products. You can look at Amazon's competitors. This is a great way to build a comps table or get a list of other businesses that may be relevant for valuing the company. Let's look at how it's classified here under consumer discretionary. Let's click on analyst coverage. And we can see all the research analysts that cover Amazon. You can see here their target price and recommendation. Let's scroll down. And you can see here there are 89 equity analysts, at least in capital IQ, that cover Amazon. And finally, we can jump into corporate governance here to get a sense of the board and the corporate oversight for the business. So there's a lot of good stuff to explore here, all under the company summary section, with the tear sheet being the primary source of initial information for the business. So start by searching for the company name, then click on it when it comes up in the search results, and you're brought right to this company profile page here. Let's keep moving through Amazon's company profile page, and we'll focus down here on the financials and valuation section. Let's look at key statistics for Amazon. We can see here some highlights like revenue, EBITDA, and profitability over time. We can see the company's capitalization table here, where we can see the buildup to get to the total enterprise value for the business. And we can also get the market cap or equity value of the business here. We can see trading multiples as well. So there's a lot that we could dig into here. But first, let's just move on and keep scanning. Let's look at the income statement. This is where we can control what we see. So we could go back and select more history, going back to the year 2010, for example, or 2011 here. We could also choose if we want to see annual, quarterly, year-to-date, last 12 months, or some other type of period. We could look at original or restated filings. So there's a lot that you can toggle with here. So let's say that we want to select these three years of history. We've got those specific three years that we want information for. We can see the income statement. We could go into the balance sheet and explore all sorts of areas of the balance sheet and drill in for extra detail. You can see here Amazon's cash flow statement. And we can dig into these numbers. So let's click on this. And you'll see some extra information come up here. You can see the reporting period, the currency, the amount, etc. And if I click into it, 
it's actually going to open up the filing. So it's going to take me straight to Amazon's 10K and show me the number. So this is a really powerful way to do a full audit of financial information for a business. So let's pause here, but you can see how you could go through each of the key financial statements through different time periods and drill in all the way to the public company filing that they made. Let's take a look at how we can export everything across here based on the time periods that we have selected straight into Excel so we can start playing around with it and building some models. So if I want to move over to Excel and start doing some of my own analysis, I can click Download Financials. And then we see here that the file has been downloaded. And now I've got this in Excel. So I can just jump in and I can actually start playing with these numbers in Excel. It's of course using the same view and the same settings that I had selected here. So it's just going to download whatever I've got here, which is these particular years. And if I bring this up so you can see the whole thing, you can see that it's downloaded all of the sections for me. So I've got Amazon's income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, multiples, capitalization, all this great data downloaded instantly into Excel for me. And that's how you use the financial section of Capital IQ. Now let's move on to look at multiples. When we get to the multiples area, we'll see that there are a variety of them like total enterprise value compared to last 12 months revenue or total enterprise value compared to next 12 months EBITDA. And we can drill into any of these by clicking on it. We can see how the calculation is made. So we can see the components of total enterprise value over here, the market cap plus net debt. And we can also see a breakdown of the revenue. Okay, now let's check out enterprise value to next 12 months EBITDA. So this is a forward looking number. Next 12 months will be an estimate from analysts. All right, so here we have total enterprise value. Then we've got next 12 months EBITDA. So if I go into next 12 months EBITDA and I look at each of these four quarters, I can actually drill in and if I scroll down, I'm going to see all of these various analysts and what their forecasts are for EBITDA. So you can see Raymond James here and you can dive in even deeper. You can see who the analyst is and you can see uh, the history here as well. And you could drill in even further. But this really gives you a powerful insight into what analysts are expecting for the business. So you can export all this to Excel, of course. So that's that's how you look at the multiples here on the financial section. Let's also look at the ratios. So here we have all these ratios for the company sorted by category from profitability and margins to solvency and growth rates, etc. And these are the types of ratios we covered extensively in our financial analysis fundamentals course. But if you have access to cap IQ, you can pull this type of information instantly as you see here and export it to Excel and start playing around with it. Let's also look at supplemental. So supplemental, if we wanted to drill into stock based compensation, for example, which is a non cash item that analysts often play around with, we could do that here. If I wanted to look at industry specific data, which for some industries is very important, like in natural resources, but in Amazon's case, they really just have online revenues as an industry specific metric. And then finally segments where we can get the segmented information. So we could look at revenue by geography and by segment. So you can see Amazon Web Services separated out here. And then you can see total geographic breakdown here as well. So it's nice to be able to pull that information very easily from Cap IQ. So as you can see, then we've rounded out the financials and valuation section of Cap IQ, a lot of exciting stuff to pull here and export into Excel. All right, now let's look at the estimates area. I've clicked into CIQ estimates, capital IQ, 
estimates and we can see here the dashboard where all the estimates are centralized. You can see a summary of analyst recommendations right here with a strong buy recommendation for Amazon. You can see target price information here. You can see the high and the low, for example, standard deviation and the total number of estimates, 46. The recommendation is outperform. So you can see there's a fairly strong consensus here of bullish outlooks for Amazon. Then if we scroll down, we can drill into any of these items. We could look at revenue, EBITDA, free cash flow, for example, and we can look out several years and drill into these estimates. So let's look at free cash flow out to 2023 for Amazon. Okay, so now we can drill in and we can see here a list of analysts and their estimates here for free cash flow. And you can see there's a pretty big range here actually, quite wide ranging in fact. But then we get the average here or the mean of the consensus. So that's how you would drill into any of these. The other thing that we can look at here that's quite interesting is guidance. So if I scroll back up, I'll now click to guidance. And this is where we have the guidance management has provided for the business. So Amazon guides on revenue and EBIT. And we can expand either of these to get more information. But at a high level, we can see here, for example, for Q4 of 2020, here is the revenue range that's been provided, and here is the EBIT range that's been provided. So I've clicked in, and if I look at guidance, I get a little bit more information here, but not, not much actually. But we can still see the range, and we can look back through history, and we can actually see, for example, if they've been above guidance, as they have been in these cases. And this is just a very helpful way to quickly get access to all the guidance information for a company. So between CIQ estimates and guidance, you can get a lot of good forward-looking information about a business.